New York Knicks fans are over the moon as the team makes its first playoff appearance since 2013. Today, we're joined by longtime New York Knicks supporter and CEO of Knicks Fan TV, Casey Powell, or better known as CP the Franchise. All right, so right here on ANC, we have CP the Franchise going to talk about the New York Knicks fresh of a game to win CP. I know you just came from the garden as we're recording this interview. First of all, what's it like, you know, as a long time New York Knicks supporter for the Knicks to be able to, to uh, come back to the playoffs? Man, Knicks, it's been eight long years. And, and even before then, you know, for the better part of 20 years, the, the team has, has, this hasn't been playing well. And they did go to the playoffs for, for three years during Carmelo's time here, but they, they just didn't put anything sustainable on the court. This year, uh, with no expectations for this team, you know, a lot of people thought that this team would only win 20-something games this season. They came back and doubled that and won 41 off of last year's uh, 21. And so, you know, to make the playoffs in the fourth seed now, going up against the Hawks, and now tonight having won, it's just an incredible feeling. You know, New Yorkers, New York Knicks fans around the world are starving and, and, and they're hopeful that this team will turn it around and have some success with people coming back from the pandemic and filling in Madison Square Garden. And, and now to get their first playoff win in eight years, uh, the, the jubilation was it was just electric in the streets of New York City tonight. Mm. Now, CP, let's help out the Knicks fans, uh, the Filipino Knicks fans who are watching. Can you give us a visual of what it's like to be in the garden, to watch live games, the whole city, you know, is celebrating for uh, this, you know, little success yet. I know it's, uh, it, it's, it's far, uh, the success now is far from what you want to achieve, but how is it like now, of course, in the city of New York? Inside, it's everyone standing up. You can feel it. You can feel the energy all around you, the whole ambiance. Um, they're, they're happy, they're, they're joyful, in a joyful mood. They're screaming defense, you know, because they want their team to, to get that stop, to, to get that key score and to win the game. And so everyone to a man in that building, 15,000 people in that building, you know, when it's time to stand up, everyone's up at, at once. When it's time to sit down, everybody's sitting at once. When it's time to scream defense, everyone's screaming defense. And it's, you know, young people, older people, people from all around the world, and, and everyone is just uh, focused on, on hoping that the team gets a win and that they play well, you know? And, and so it's just an electricity in Madison Square Garden that is unlike any other. And, and tonight and, and in game one on Sunday, you could really feel it. I was at both games and you could really feel the energy. Now for you, CP, let's go to a basketball talk a bit. How are the Knicks able to maintain their spot at number four for the whole regular season? Well, I think first you can look at Julius Randle. He just won the most improved player award and it was well-deserved because this year he has um, realized season highs, career highs all across the board in points, assists, rebounds, and three-point percentage. Last year he was shooting 29% from three-point land. This year he's up over 40% from three-point land. So he's really improved his shooting. And another big area where he improved was not just assists, but making winning plays, you know, playmaking for his teammates, uh, making winning plays and, and playmaking for R.J. Barrett, for Reggie Bullock, making those players a lot better. And that's why, you know, when, when we came into the season with, that, with very low expectations, it's because we didn't know who was going to come here and help make those guys better because Julius Randle didn't have a good season last year. Right. And so he's certainly the key. Another big key has been, no doubt, has been the, the midseason trade of Derrick Rose for Derrick Rose. They traded Dennis Smith Jr. and a second-round pick to the Detroit Pistons to pick up Derrick Rose. And Derrick Rose has truly been the, the starting point guard that we've always needed on this team. This team last year was lacking a true floor general and a true starting point guard. And Derrick Rose came here. He has experience with Tom Thibodeau. He has experience with Taj Gibson. And just being a, a veteran, a former MVP, he really gave this team a lift. First in the, with the second unit, but now you're seeing him play more with the starting lineup, more with Julius Randle and R.J. Barrett, and Derrick Rose has really elevated this team. Uh, lastly, I would also look at Nerland's Noel, because when Mitchell Robinson went down with an injury, we didn't know how we were going to rebound and, and, and you know, replace 
such an important piece to our defense. But Nerlens Noel uh, finished lead, finished second in the league in blocks, and he really did well protecting the rim and anchoring our defense. So Nerlens Noel was a big factor in this as well. And then I would also say Tom Thibodeau. Because going into uh, this year, the Knicks were the 23rd ranked defense. And Tom Thibodeau had this team ranked no worse than fifth practically for most of the year. And so you expected them to, to improve a little bit, but they've improved a lot. And they finished the season number one in opponents points per game, number one in opponents field goal percentage and number one in opponents three-point field goal percentage. Mm -hmm. So the Knicks defense overall under Tom Thibodeau had really improved. And I say, so I would say those were the four reasons why the Knicks were able to maintain that number four seed in the playoffs. Well, right now it's a Saturday in uh, Manila and the game three is underway. But as we, uh, game three is underway, uh, game two, actually, uh, that was like around Thursday Manila time. Knicks down by 13 at halftime, then they rallied a uh, I think around mid in the third quarter, how were they able to do that and actually come up with a convincing win in game two? So number one, it was the adjustments by Tom Thibodeau. Instead of starting Alfred Payton and Nerlens Noel, he started Derrick Rose and Todd Gibson. And what that did was it, it opened up the Knicks offense because Julius Randle for the first two games, for, for, mo for the first game and most of the second game, he really struggled to get the team going as he had done in the regular season. And so it was very important to bring in Derrick Rose to be um, the guy that can really open the offense up, take pressure off of Julius Randle by being able to score and facilitate himself. And he was able to do that in that third quarter. You also had Reggie Bullock, who did not have a good game uh, in game one, turned it around in game two, hitting a multiple clutch three-point shots. I also yeah. thought the adjustment by Coach Tibbs by bringing Alec Burks and Emmanuel quickly in with Obi Toppin, they were great in their minutes off the bench. Obi Toppin chipped in with eight points and played some very good defense and rebounded the ball for the Knicks in that third quarter as well. And then in the fourth quarter, it was, it was much of the same. Julius Randle started to improve his play. He became more of a playmaker for his team. He hit two big three-point shots for us in that second half as well. Derrick Rose, as I said, he's been outstanding. He finished with 26 points on the night, and Bullock rebounded with another 15 points on the night as well. So the Knicks offense really stepped up, but in the final few minutes, the Knicks held the Hawks to uh, very few points, and their defense really stepped up. They were able to make the adjustments on Trey Young, who had an outstanding game in the first game. They put Reggie Bullock on Trey Young, forced Trey Young to go to his left more. They trapped Trey Young more on his mm -hmm. pick and roll attempts and forced him to pass the ball a lot more. Now that forced the Hawks players to beat the Knicks. Could the Hawks players make their shots to close the game? And they really didn't. And so right. it was a great job by the Knicks playing defense and ultimately closing the game. Uh, now that, uh, of course, games three and four will be in Atlanta, realistically, uh, what will it be like for the Knicks in this uh, next two games uh, away? Well, well, Knicks fans travel very well, and Atlanta is is known uh, to be a hub for New Yorkers or former New Yorkers, so there will be a lot of Knicks fans there. So I do not see it being a, a home court advantage for the Hawks in either of these two games, but I do think the teams will split the series in Atlanta because I feel like these teams are fairly evenly matched and I feel like, you know, the Knicks will have their moments and the Hawks will have their moments as well. I, I think that Julius Randle has, will now shake off the nerves and maybe go back to who he's been for the Knicks most of this regular season, which is that 20 point 10 rebound, you know, six assist guy that can really be the engine and the driving force behind the Knicks offense. These first two games, he was very timid. And I thought a lot of that was the jitters in having playing in his first playoff series and Madison Square Garden with the crowd and the electricity that I had described earlier. I think that can that can really throw a player off and cause them to be a bit nervous. And so I think with these first two games under his belt, I think he'll come and play a, a lot better. But also for the Hawks, you can expect a lot of their role players to play better as because they're at home. And so I think these two teams will, will split the series. Now, uh, my last point, my last question for you, CP, I know that being a diehard Knicks fan, and just for the sake of this interview, of also being objective, if we can marry that both, what is your hope? Or at the same time, what is maybe your object, 
objective or your uh maybe objective um opinion on how far the Knicks will go this season, this postseason. I think they can beat the Hawks in this round. And you know, facing Philadelphia in the second round, I, I think Philadelphia is a better team with Joel Embiid being a dominant, you know, one of the most dominant players in the league, an MVP candidate. Uh, and Philly being a very, very solid defensive team. The Knicks did not beat this team this year, and, and Joel Embiid only played in one out of the two matchups. I don't see the Knicks getting past Philadelphia. So while I do feel like we can win this series against the Hawks, I think we will lose to Philadelphia in the second round. But, you know, looking at it holistically in the, in the grand scheme of things, it, it's been a, a monumental season for the Knicks. And as I said, starting off this interview, we really had no expectations for this team coming into this season. We thought right. it was going to be a season where we improved a little bit, and then you go into the draft lottery and, and you, you know, draft a, another top prospect. But this year, they've, they've surpassed their expectations far and away. The city is proud of their effort. They're proud of their fight. Um, Tom Thibodeau has really uh, implemented and, and imparted the old Knicks way onto this team of playing defense and being physical and playing with pride and passion. And so the city is just rallying behind them. And of course, Filipino Knicks fans are also elated that the Knicks, as you mentioned, CP surpassed expectations. And of course, good luck to the New York Knicks this postseason. We have CP the franchise right here on ANC. CP, thanks. <laughs>